the wife of Bath <coughs> is a cloth maker, as she can be compared to none in the land in the art of cloth making. She comes from the city of Bath and Chosa focuses more on her physical and moral presentation. She uses the slightest opportunity to get to to get her desires as she does not consider the church as a place of worship but as a place of personal aggrandizement and show off. When she goes to church, no woman dares to go to the offertory table before she does. And if this happens, the wife of Bath will decline going to the offertory and she will be full of rage. Her dresses are very expensive and they are of the finest quality and above all, they are tight-fitting despite her large hips. Physically, she is beautiful. She has a gap tooth, but she is also death. Having a gap tooth in the medieval period was considered one of the physical characteristics of beauty. Her scarf on Sundays alone can weigh up to 10 pounds. The picture of her moving majestically to the offertory constitutes a distraction for worshippers, but she does this on purpose. She prefers to sacrifice charity for vanity if she is not in good mood. She has been married five times in church and not counting her numerous amorous relationship that she has had in her youth, yet she still wants a man. Her description reveals that she is a champion in promiscuity with such large hips and a gap tooth. She is bold, lascivious, glutinous, and false. She loves traveling and she has visited many places around the world. She has been to Cologne. She has been to the Holy Land, she has been to Jerusalem. She is bold in the presence of men and has a solution to every love problem. Therefore, she is an exhibitionist. She is promiscuous and she is very experienced. She is full of hypocrisy and extravagance. She loves a pleasurable life. Her promiscuity and five marriages that have taken place in the same church highlights the corruption in the church and the falling moral standards of the medieval church. It also focuses on moral decadence in the society, both at the secular and clerical levels. From the above presentation, one can hardly associate her with the pilgrimage, which is a pious journey. We can rightfully conclude that she is undertaking this journey to look for a sixth husband, reason why she speaks boldly in the presence of men. Conscious of the fact that some of the pilgrims are worldly, she will put her seductive methods in practice to get one of them to lay with her in bed. Her presence among the others constitutes a source of temptation and risk to put the whole pilgrimage in danger. Her domineering and authoritative posture before men could be the cause why she has not been able to keep her previous husbands. Despite all her scandalous life, Chosa calls her a worthy woman, which is a verbal irony. Through her, Chosa satirizes the church for failing to protect the institution of marriage. The church has no shame to admit and bless the marriage of a woman who has been divorced many times because she has money, highlighting materialism. Through her, Chosa questions the reliability and credibility of the church as the guarantor of moral principles. Nevertheless, she wins the admiration of, for her assertiveness and self-confidence. She's a woman who is very independent-minded and self-reliant. This is already a clear example of how morally decadent the medieval period was, both within the church and outside it.